Exploring the iconic Roby House by Frank Lloyd Wright The Roby House, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, was constructed between 1908 and 1909 in Oak Park, Illinois. It was commissioned by Frederick C. Roby, a 28-year-old assistant manager of the Excelsior Supply Company. The house was influenced by Wright's previous work, including the Ferdinand F. Tomic House in Riverside, Illinois. Construction began in April 1909 and was completed in January 1911, with a total cost of $58,500. However, Robbie's financial difficulties and personal issues led him to sell the house after just 14 months of living in it. The house changed owners several times until it was acquired by the Chicago Theological Seminary in 1926. During its time as a dormitory and dining hall, the house suffered interior damage, but some of Wright's original furnishings were saved. The most serious threat to the Roby House came in 1957, when the seminary planned to demolish it to make way for a dormitory. An international outcry, including Wright's protest, led to the preservation of the house. Fraternities at the University of Chicago offered alternative properties, which ultimately saved the Roby House. In 1958, Real estate developer William Zeckendorf acquired the house and later donated it to the University of Chicago. It served various purposes, including as the Adlai E. Stevenson Institute of International Affairs. In 1971, the Roby House was declared a Chicago landmark. In 1997, the Frank Lloyd Wright Trust took over the operations and restoration of the house. A major restoration effort began in 2002 and was completed in 2019, costing over $11 million. The restoration focused on both structural and interior elements, returning the house to its original 1910 appearance. Today, the Roby House remains a popular and iconic example of Frank Lloyd Wright's architectural style. Let's dive in the architecture field of the house. The Roby House, a prominent example of Frank Lloyd Wright's prairie-style architecture showcases a design philosophy deeply rooted in the Midwest prairie landscape. This architectural style, named by critics and historians, draws inspiration from the natural elements of the region. Wright's prairie houses are characterized not only by their exterior design, but also by his meticulous attention to every aspect of the interior, including windows, lighting, rugs, furniture, and textiles. Wright himself emphasized the inseparable connection between the building and its furnishings, viewing them as integral components that contribute to the overall character and completeness of his architectural creations. The Roby House's architectural features include projecting cantilevered roof eaves, continuous bands of art glass windows, and the use of Roman brick, all of which emphasize the horizontal aspect. Frank Lloyd Wright associated the horizontal line with the American prairie, symbolizing repose and shelter, making it suitable for a residential house. The exterior walls consist of a double-wide construction with a core of Chicago common brick and a veneer of red-orange iron-spotted Roman brick. Horizontal joints feature cream-colored mortar, while small vertical joints use brick-colored mortar, creating a seamless appearance from a distance. The art glass windows exhibit an abstract pattern of colored and clear glass, utilizing Wright's preferred 30 and 60 degree angles. Additionally, the house's steel structure, made possible by a generous budget, minimizes eaves deflection. Exterior trim work such as planter urns, copings, lintels, and sills is crafted from Bedford limestone, adding to the house's architectural richness. The Roby House features a design comprised of two large rectangles that appear to shift alongside each other. Frank Lloyd Wright referred to the Southwest Rectangle, housing the primary living areas, as the major vessel. On the first floor, there's a billiards room on the west end and a children's playroom on the east end. 
The billiards room connects to a walk-in safe and storage area beneath the front porch projection. Both the billiards and playroom lead to an enclosed garden on the south side, with an additional entrance to the courtyard on the east end. Moving to the second floor, you'll find the entry hall at the top of the central stairway, the living room on the west end, and the dining room on the east end. Initially, built-in Ingle Nook bench cabinetry separated the entry hallway from the living room. The living and dining rooms flow seamlessly along the south side of the building and open onto an exterior balcony running the length of the south side. This balcony overlooks the enclosed garden. The living room's west end boasts a prow featuring art glass windows and doors leading to the west porch under the cantilevered roof. Wright's design encourages fluid movement between the interior and exterior spaces, allowing users to engage freely with both. The third floor of the Roby House serves as a central overlap between the major and minor sections of the building. Frank Lloyd Wright referred to this level as the Belvedere, a place offering beautiful views. On the south side of this floor, you'll find the master bedroom, dressing area, a full bathroom, and a balcony facing south and west accessible through an art glass door. The north side of this floor features two additional bedrooms and another full bathroom. All the windows on this level incorporate art glass panels. The bedrooms have built-in dresser drawers beneath the windows, extending into the eave spaces. In total, the entire building spans approximately 9,062 square feet. In conclusion, the Roby House stands as a timeless masterpiece of architectural innovation and design by Frank Lloyd Wright. Its prairie style, seamless integration of interior and exterior spaces, and meticulous attention to detail make it a true gem in the world of architecture. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the remarkable Roby House.